What's up guys, AX here, back with another video, and today I'll be discussing the full Denver Broncos team. I'd like to start this off by saying I'm not a Denver Broncos fan or anything close to it, so I'm not being biased whatsoever. I'll be discussing every part of the team in different segments, so let's get into it. Like it's MMA, don't waste my time, I ain't finna play shit. Yeah. Niggas in the game. The first thing I would like to discuss is the corners, and I'd like to say overall it's really solid. They have a really promising rookie in Patrick Sertain, and he's been amazing all throughout college. He's really aggressive on the line of scrimmage and a really good open field tackler. He allows little to no catches and always makes a play on the ball. I'd like to say Patrick Sertain is a high risk, high reward type player. It's a hit or miss, but if it's a hit, he's going to be amazing. I know he's not proven yet, but I think honestly he will be an amazing NFL player. Next on the list is Bryce Cal. Callahan, and he had an amazing year last year. He's decent at zone coverage and very good at man-to-man. -man. He's a pretty good punt and kick returner also. He's just a complete player all around. If I had to rank Callahan out of 10, I'd give him probably like a 7 to an 8. There's always room for improvement, but is it essential? No. Next is Kyle Fuller, and I have to say this man is the definition of underrated. In my opinion, he's one of the hardest hitting corners in the league. He was a big tribute to the Bears' success, and he was just amazing for them all around. I was really surprised when they cut him but that was an amazing pickup for the Broncos if he does get one of the starting corner roles which he might not he's gonna play amazing he's a very solid corner in my opinion probably top 20 the Broncos have a no fly zone secondary and you'll see more when I get into the safeties I think they have one of the better if not best group of corners in the league it all honestly depends if Patrick Sertain lives up to the hype or not so Patrick Sertain not being proven yet brings my overall grade to the corners to a B plus if Patrick Sertain does live up to the hype it'll be an a minus possibly an a now i'll get into the safeties which is a really underrated part of the broncos defense gonna kill a backpack nigga with his jams poured on geek ass nigga dweeb ass nigga never had a g -pack. first we'll talk about kareem jackson because honestly he's a very underrated player he's average when blitzing he's nothing crazy and he's pretty decent in coverage the one really good trait of him is when he does get the ball into his hands he always makes a really big return out of it he's a pretty hard hitter too he's never somebody you want to just run into he He's a pretty good tackler too, not often do you see him miss a tackle, and when he has a gap to close in on, he usually fills it. At the end of the day, he's not an amazing player, but he's not bad, and he's overall decent. Next is Justin Simmons, and oh my god, this man is a freak of nature. This man, Justin Simmons, is an amazing overall player. You not often do you see a ball completed his way. He's a ball hawk too. If the ball is coming in his direction, you better just pray because it's going into his hands. He's amazing in zone coverage. He's pretty good at man coverage he's not amazing but he's been pretty good his tackling ability is really underrated but he's mainly known for his coverage skills i think justin simmons is a top five safety maybe even top three because he's so underrated it's just unbelievable so overall kareem jackson is good pretty decent and justin simmons is completely amazing so in my opinion i'll be wrong to give the safeties anything but an a because that's completely what they deserve justin simmons is a freak of nature and that's what make the safeties really stick out to me the next part of the Broncos I'll be discussing is their linebackers. I'm gonna say this now Von Miller and Bradley Chubb they're considered as outside linebackers they're not considered on the defensive line that there will change the overall grade of the defensive line and the linebackers the first person I'll be talking about is Von Miller and right here I'm gonna say he's still good he's obviously not as good as he was in his prime but that doesn't mean he's bad overall he's coming off a big injury and ACL tear but honestly I think he's still gonna have it in him Von Miller's gonna come with the determination to prove everyone wrong and I'm not doubting what whatsoever that he will he's still a really solid run stopper he can easily finesse off the edge he's just a good player overall Vaughn's made a career off of sacking people and forcing fumbles and honestly I think he'll just continue doing just that everyone knows how great of a player Von Miller was and honestly I think he'll just live his legacy on next I'll be talking about Bradley Chubb and overall he is a very underrated player he's amazing at coming off the edge and kind of reminds me of a prime Von Miller I'm not saying that he's the next Von Miller but I'm not saying that he isn't he's also a really good run stopper and overall he's just built he always gets really fast block sheds and other quarterbacks should just be terrified whenever they see him he's a really good player and there's only room for improvement from here on out the last linebacker i'll be talking about is aj johnson i'll be dead honest i've never heard of this guy before recording this video and honestly he's a pretty solid player he's not bad in his 2020 season with the denver broncos he had 124 tackles one sack and zero interceptions he's an average run 
run stopper. He's a pretty good tackler, but he's definitely a liability in coverage. The only standout quality by Johnson is open field tackling is pretty good. So overall, he's an okay linebacker. He's nothing crazy and definitely not anything compared to the other two linebackers on his team. And I'll say this here right now, it's a crime to put this anything below an A. If AJ Johnson improves, honestly, I think this whole entire linebacker core could be an A+. Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are still two amazing players, even due to the injury plague. And AJ Johnson is what kind of lowers this for me, but he's not bad he's just okay the next thing i'll be discussing is the broncos defensive line Like I said before, Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are not included on the defensive line since they're both linebackers. And there's not too many standout players on the defensive line, I'll tell you that. Since Von Miller and Bradley Chubb usually play out on the ends, there's not really too many standout defensive line players. One standout player to me is Shelby Harris. He's honestly a really good tackler and he's a pretty good block shutter. He stepped up a little bit when Von Miller was injured and that's all that really matters. Mike Purcell, he's decent, nothing crazy. Draymond Jones, he's decent. Decent. It's just a bunch of decent players in my opinion. If there's any Broncos fans that know anything else about these players, please let me know. I watched a little bit of film of every one of them and it's nothing crazy. So my overall of the D-line is like a C. It's nothing crazy. If you include Bradley Chubb and Von Miller, it's probably like a B plus because that they're just amazing. Them as a duo when fully healthy will murder quarterbacks. <laughs> So I'll say this now, this defense does not have too many flaws. It's a really good defense. Their corners are really good. Their safeties, they're really good. Their linebackers, they're really good. Their D-line is pretty decent. I don't know. Without Von Miller and Bradley Chubb, the D-line's pretty bad. But with them, it's pretty good. So my final grade of this defense is an A. Because it's one of the best defenses in the league when fully healthy. If you don't include Von Miller and Bradley Chubb on the defensive line, it's probably like a B plus. Their secondary is a no-fly zone. And Von Miller and Bradley Chubb are just monsters. The star of this defense, in my opinion, is definitely Justin Simmons, but we'll just have to wait to see. The next thing I'll be getting into is the Broncos offense. In my opinion, the defense is way better, but the offense still has a few bright spots. There's a lot of people that are having prove it years on offense, so I think a lot of good will come out of that. first part of the offense we'll be talking about is the quarterbacks and this is probably the weakest part we don't know who's starting yet because there's a QB competition but either way I don't think it'll be that good first we'll talk about Drew Locke and honestly I do not think he's a good quarterback whatsoever there's a lot of negative traits about him so before I list those I would like to say the positives first out of nowhere this man will have a random game and play like a franchise quarterback another thing is he's pretty good at play action and going through his reads really fast I don't know there's not a lot of positive so I'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Now I'll go through the negatives because there's a lot of these when it comes to Drew Locke. He's bad at reading pressure. He's a one read quarterback. He throws too many interceptions. He's terrible at scrambling and I'll keep going. He fumbles too often. He's really, really bad in the red zone and overall he's just not a good quarterback. Now I'll talk about Teddy Bridgewater and this is when it gets somewhat better. I honestly think Teddy Bridgewater should start over Drew Locke this year and I think he will. Some of the negatives of Teddy Bridgewater is he's really bad with fumbling especially near the goal line another thing is he's really really inconsistent sometimes he'll have a bad game and sometimes he'll have a really good game he also goes through his reads too quickly sometimes and other times he goes through them way too slow and takes a sack but i'll say when he's on his a game he plays completely amazing i'll tell you that i won't waste too much more time on the quarterback room so overall i'll give it a c minus drew locks bad but on a prove it year teddy bridgewater's average so overall Oh, it's a C minus. If one of them proved me wrong and go off this year, good for them, but honestly, I just don't see it happening. Next, I'll be talking about the running backs, and honestly, this part's all over the place. <laughs> Thank you.
They lost Philip Lindsay in free agency, but they gained a really aggressive runner the second round of the draft in Devontae Williams. He's from South Carolina. In my opinion, he's going to be the best running back in the draft under maybe Trey Sermon, other than Ashi Harris, of course. They also have Melvin Gordon, where he's really good, honestly very underrated, and while it's just him as the starting role, I think he's going to get a lot better. He's really fast. He's good at breaking tackles in the open field. He always finds a hole, even being the bad Broncos O-line last year. I think there's only going to be improvement with Melvin Gordon from now on. There's no other standout running backs in the Broncos running back room, but then being there's Mike Boone, Royce Freeman, Abden Pressman, Levante Bellamy, and Demaria Crockett. I think learning under Melvin Gordon will shape Javante Williams into a really good running back. Overall, I'll give the running back room a C plus to a B minus. It got worse losing Philip Lindsay, but definitely getting Javante Williams in the second round of the draft will be a really good pickup. The next part of the Broncos offense I'll be discussing is their offensive line. First, I'll start off by saying this. Last year, their offensive line was god-awful. It was probably one of the worst in the NFL. And this year, I had high hopes, and I'd only think it'd get better from there. But I might have been wrong. Jawan James tore his ACL, and he's out for the season and got picked up by the Ravens recently. He was good in run blocking and pretty good in pass coverage. Their best healthy player on the offensive line right now is Garrett Bowles, no question. He's very solid in pass coverage, and he's an okay run stuffer. They have a pretty good good center and Lloyd Cushenberry and other than that the offensive line is god awful. I can't honestly see Tom Nalen, Donald Stephenson, Chris Hinton or Chris Myers being good. Honestly, I think the offensive line got worse from last year, and last year it was terrible. There's definitely a few bright spots on the offensive line, but it's nothing that'll stand out to me and think it'll actually be good. So overall, I'll give the offensive line a C to a C-. minus. It could be better from last year, or it could be worse. I honestly can't tell, but they definitely took a few losses. The next part of the Broncos I'll be talking about is their tight end. only person who really matters on the tight end is Noah Fan, because the rest are a bunch of nobodies. And I'll say this now, this man does not have really any negative traits on him. For being a tight end, this man is really, really fast. He's really good at blocking. He's really strong. He has a really good stiff arm and truck. And possibly one of his best traits is run blocking. He's a really, really good run blocker. One of the things he's also really good at is selling it like it's a run play and then just breaking off into a really good route. Honestly, I think this will be Noah Fan's breakout out year if he has Teddy Bridgewater a quarterback. If he has Drew Locke passing to him, no way. He's a really solid tight end and honestly he just had really bad quarterback play throughout his whole entire career. Overall, I'll give the tight end room a B plus because other than Noah Fant, I have no clue who else is on it. With that being said, I think Noah Fant will have an amazing year and break out completely. He's a star in the making and most definitely does not get the respect he deserves. The next part of the Broncos I'll be talking about is their wide receivers and Jesus is stacked. First off, we'll talk about Jerry Judy, and he had an okay rookie season, but honestly, he's just an amazing route runner. I think this year will be his breakout year, and I'd honestly already put him in my top five route runners in the NFL. Honestly, just the way he's able to sell routes with really, really sharp and fast cuts just amazes me. Honestly, the only thing stopping Jerry Judy from being an amazing wide receiver is his inconsistent hands. There will be some plays where he just absolutely mosses and makes an insane catch, and there's others where he'll just just drop wide open passes. For an example, the second game against the Chargers, he had six drops in the whole entire game. He finished second in 2020 of drop passes with 14. If he just fixes his hands and becomes more consistent, he's going to be an amazing NFL wide receiver. The next Broncos wide receiver I'll be talking about is Cortland Sutton, and coming off of ACL tear, he has a lot to prove. He's a really good receiver and honestly does not have any flaws. He can gain separation pretty easily. He's a really good route runner. He is 
pretty good speed. He's just amazing. One of his best traits, in my opinion, is catching, and it's showing off pretty amazingly because of his terrible quarterback play. He gets thrown hard to catch balls and usually always comes down with them. He's a really solid player, and I can't wait to see what he does coming off an ACL tear. Deshaun Hamilton and Tim Patrick will have to fight out for the wide receiver three role, but honestly, I think they'll both be really solid at it, but overall, I'll give Tim Patrick the edge. Overall, I think the wide receivers are the best part of the Broncos offense, and they're the most standout piece to me. Overall, I'll give them an A- minus because I don't know how Cortland Sutton will play off of an ACL tear, and I don't know how much Jerry Judy will improve. This grading might improve later in the year, but we'll just have to wait to see how everyone plays. So overall for the offense, I'll give them to a B to a B minus. Their quarterback room is really, really average. It's kind of a prove a year for both Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. Their running backs are okay. Melvin Gordon's average, and I don't know how Javante Williams will play being a rookie. Broncos O-line is bad per usual. Noah Fant is an amazing tight end and just makes the tight end room 10 times better. And last but not least, I think their wide receiver room is really, really good. Overall, my ending grade of this offense can easily change throughout the year because a lot of people could get easily better. My overall grade for the Broncos team is a B plus. There's some really good players on this team and it has an amazing defense and an okay offense. This Broncos team is really young and it has a lot of surprises to come with it. This year the Broncos are going to sweep under a lot of people's radars and honestly I have them making the playoffs. I have a lot of hope in this young Broncos team and honestly I hope they prove everyone wrong because they have a lot of people doubting them considering how they overhyped them last year. If you made it to the end, thank you. I know this is a longer video than usual. I appreciate it. Leave your opinions on this Broncos team down below, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out.